And welcome everyone to Secrets of Sarmanath session 29. I am excited to have Gorik back with us, but it seems that we have lost out a Hugh Seafeather. Uh, we'll see if he wakes up and joins us or not. Yep, somewhere <laughs> out there, on. there's a very sleepy Australian who has overslept uh, his alarm. Probably yes. fast. Asleep. Yes, it seems yeah. so. Uh, so, uh, it's been a couple weeks, Mike. How have you been? What's going on with you? What's new? I've uh, been all right. Uh, still, I'm I'm on I'm on dad duty right now, so we've got guest star this morning. Mike. Well, I mean yeah. guest star, yep. but the the true star, top billing right there. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Somebody has to carry this show, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> well, he can't carry his own head right now, so he probably, <laughs> he probably so he's won't be carrying this is show. What you yeah. say. Exactly. Yeah. So, no, it's just it's just uh, dad life. At the first couple months is uh, is pretty busy. Sorry, I couldn't make it last week. I had my friend uh, my friend Aram was in from out of town. He lives in Chicago. He's the the DM for God's Fall and Rise of the Demigods. If you watch either yeah. of the watch or listen to either of those shows, uh, he was visiting Portland for Rose City Comic Con, and he doesn't get out here very much. So I was I was taking some time to to see my Chicagoan friend. <sighs> nice. How was the How was the Comic Con? Well, I was only there for like two hours, yeah. but it was pretty good. I managed to avoid um, spending uh, $95 on any sets of level up dice, which was, right. which was good for good for my uh, haven't been to work in two months budget. What a willpower uh, check. That was good. Yeah. You, you yeah. I also, I also um, mostly avoided the artist's alley so that I didn't spend, uh, I think the last time I went to a Comic-Con, I came home with about $300 in art. Uh, which to be fair is like still like decorating like our bedroom and stuff. So, you know, it it's not. I didn't get like no use out of said art, but um, I did not have three hundred dollars to spend on art. So like I easily could have gone to the comic con and come back with like two hundred dollars in dice and three hundred dollars in art and been like, yep. So, um, <laughs> Cass, you have the baby for the next couple of weeks because I'm working exclusively doubles until I'm not in negative balance anymore. All right. Well, we're glad that you're in the black and yep. <laughs> doing <Just>. good. <laughs> awesome. So, uh, let's see. We'll go across here. Dan, what's up? What's up with you? What's new? How you been the last week? Uh, not too much is new. It's uh, still football season, so everything's going well. Who did the Ducks play today, Dan? We play Stanford on the road. Okay. Big game, big game this that, week. Yeah, that's gonna be that's gonna be a big game. Are you working? Fun. Uh, no, it is my sister's birthday a few oh, days ago, so nice. I'm going out to dinner with her. Nice. All right. But should be able to catch some of the duck game and we end here. Oh, bless you. <laughs> All right. Well, enjoy yeah. <laughs> enjoy your time with your sister. You would. I was trying to remember her name, and it feels really bad because I was in like nine classes with her in school, and she's your sister. You would think I would remember this, but I, I don't, I'm a bad friend, yeah. I guess. I know your brother's Melanie. name. Emily. Emily. It's Emily. It is Emily. I nailed it. Just I had to admit <laughs> I'm stupid first, and then so once I admit I'm stupid, then my memory works. <laughs> <laughs> Enjoy Emily's birthday. Have a good time. Uh, Faye, uh, yeah. how have you been? How's your last week been going? What's new with you? Well, it's been a week. <laughs> <laughs> I do have some. I actually, okay, I know you guys love this spot, so one second. I got, I got something. Are you going to go put on her Golden Globes outfit? I hope so. <laughs> what? Golden Globes? What are you talking <laughs> what about? What a callback. I like it. <laughs> no, so... <laughs> Um, as you know, I do have a cacti collection, and I've acquired somebody whom I've been looking at for quite a while, but he was in like a decorated bowl, right? It was like a whole decoration that you had to buy, and I didn't want to spend like 40 euros on cacti, so I couldn't buy him. But then I came back, and somebody had bought the decoration, but took him out of there and just put it in a, like a tiny little place, um, so I picked him up. Very nice. And he's called it is like an old man cactus because he has these tiny like these tiny white hairs on top. He has the same hairstyle uh, as our as our uh, main billing star here. Yeah, it's exactly. true. Right. He's got I'm very like, similar hair to the baby. Same same. So I'm um, yeah, I'm pretty excited for this one. Awesome. This is my life. If you that's don't think no, this is interesting, good. we're not friends. <laughs> 
Yeah, I still have to put him in a bigger pot. I know. Don't you panic, okay? I'll I get it done eventually. But right Very now he's gonna sit next to Ronnie. News. Also, still, I still need a name. So if you have any suggestions, put them in the chat. I will consider them. I'm leaning towards Henry, but it's not set in stone yet. Henry, is that a cactus Bernie. name? I what, feel like but, you need a prickly you name say? if you're gonna be a cactus. Bernie, like Bernie, Bernie like Bernie Sanders. <laughs> yeah, he's got the hair for it. <laughs> he does That's have true. the hair. He does yeah. have the hair. He does uh, have the hair for it, and the age probably. Uh, all righty. I'll well, write it down. I'll consider it. I'll consider it. <laughs> nice. She'll take that advisement. Mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. Neca suggests Gordon, and I think that is a solid cactus. Gordon. Name. Gordon like is Gordon. a prickly oh. name. Like Gordon Ramsay, because he's got a lot of hair too. So. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Sean, <laughs> what's new with you, man? What's uh, how's your week been? Uh, you know the the computer breaking down didn't really matter that much in the end because I haven't really had time to to you know not work. All um, right. I also mm. got sick like early on in the week, so that just like right. that made. You know, rushing for deadlines, real fun. I should be um, back in school, too, because you're in a different room than you were the last time I played with you. Yeah, I've been kind of bouncing back and forth a little bit. Now that I think about it, I don't think your room has been purple last time we talked, Mike. Uh, I don't remember if I, no, if I had, if I had done I my wall yet. Was that purple before? Yeah. Never mind, yeah. then. Yeah, the the That's the awesome. bookshelf the bookshelf behind me wasn't there yet. I got I got my bookshelf with all my five e books set up again finally. So when I do things, I can actually turn around and consult a book instead <coughs> of just pulling it up online. Well, how do you get sick? Going at the I'm beginning at of the, the week. Yeah, it's probably right. easier, but I'm a PDF person. I do have the books, but I never use them. So. I really like a physical book, man. I like yeah, it. I'm, I'm I love a, them yeah, too. I don't, I don't them. Over I, there. Never, physical books especially because it makes it easier i don't like if you're running like an in-person game i don't like having like one person with a laptop who has, or i don't like people using digital screens at like an in-person game right I'm much well, that's different though right that's like a different slowly situation. escaping there we go all righty well uh with catch up done uh i think we should move into some D. &D. how's that sound as long uh, as we get D, &D catch up too because i don't know what you guys did last week all right everything so, All the good thing. Last week, uh, you guys spent some time uh, in the cave getting ready for your, your great plan, sending some messages and, and hashing out your designs uh, before rushing into the um, most inner portion of the underwater city of Raekwon, finding the, uh, the noble district uh, crawling with uh, patrols. However, uh, Rose had been studying these patrols quite closely and found a, a good timing between them uh, so that as soon as they passed, you were able to sneak in behind them relatively unnoticed as a party. Uh, where, upon some investigation, you found an old crumbling ruin that was the previous town hall in this district, largely uh, untouched by the um, Meryl that have been inhabiting the city. The uh, entire town hall was filled with ghostly visages of uh, old humans from a, a time past, seemingly milling around. Uh, you approached to try to negotiate with them, but upon seeing your fleshy bodies uh, in uh, the town hall, four soldier uh, or ghosts dressed in the soldier uniform of Raekwon past charged forward, shouting, For Raekwon! The city will not fall! And other such nonsense. Um, and when the NPC ghosts out murder hoboed the party, a pitched battle ensued uh, in which the ghosts were dealt with, but not after Hugh Seafeather took some quite terrifying amounts of damage uh, and nearly died. Uh, however, uh, upon dispatching the ghosts in the city guard's uniform, the rest of the ghosts in the town hall turned and fled, running off into the city, not to be seen from again. Uh, as you investigated the town hall, you found a locked door in the basement uh, that had the uh, runic symbol for teleportation upon it. Um, upon picking the lock and opening it, you found that the room had been sealed completely away and was dry, but as soon as you opened the door, water rushed in uh, and filled the room, almost rendering uh, the brave Hugh Seafeather unconscious and drowning. However, he nat-twentied his 
his uh, <laughs> his death saving throw and immediately woke up after briefly having a scare, um, but only to find the room completely filled with water and many scrolls broken and unusable uh, to use the teleportation circle. Uh, after a period of conversing and discovery, the party resealed the door and locked it uh, and rested for 24 hours, hoping that the ghosts and the Meryl did not come and find them. Fortunately for them, they seemed to have gone unnoticed by the forces outside, uh, and had Rose and Gorick memorize a series of create and destroy water spells to remove the water from the inside the room, um, gallon by gallon, uh, eventually drying the room completely and allowing Janlar to mark on the teleportation circle the necessary runes. Uh, after perusing through the scrolls that were undamaged, uh, you found uh, quite a few uh, scrolls to many of the cities in the Thoen Midlands, uh, including all of the named cities on the map, uh, but very uh, interestingly, having a, another named uh, teleportation scroll uh, that does not appear in the map, nor it was remembered by anyone in the party at the time, called Graveskeep. Uh, eventually, the party chalked in the runes to Balesport uh, and teleported back uh, underneath a, a cavern on the edge of the city where the uh, clerics of the crashing waves make their temple. Upon arriving, uh, the party quickly learned that the crisis in Balesport had been averted, as the old man collector had remembered all along that he had a philosopher's stone in his pocket, uh, and had set about healing the uh, governor, uh, the Duke of Balesport, and cleaning up the water supply, making sure that it was clear of any uh, strange tadpole-like monsters. Upon learning this, the party was quite upset, and rode to confront the uh, very forgetful old man, uh, who had informed them that uh, he thought all along that he had had this uh, Philosopher's Stone from underneath the city of Raekwon, uh, but had forgotten about it. But he wanted to send you all down there to meet an old friend of his who had been guarding the stone. Um, this did not seem to go over too well with the party, but when he offered them lots and lots of ducal gold for their services, um, sh the party seemed to be more willing to forgive, uh, and took his gold and kept the Philosopher's Stone from him. Uh, Janlar, very clearly not happy about this arrangement. Um... From there, the party did some shopping around town, did some odds and ends, uh, including finding some knowledge of uh, a reed-like spriggan that had come by from Balesport, um, hailing from the, the city of Coldwater, or the surrounding area. Uh, Jagar, during this time, grew despondent and surly, and made his way off into the bars to drown himself in drink, uh, and after some days was found not to be seen from or heard from again, uh, disappearing into his cups and his madness uh, away from the party. Uh, but now the rest of you have spent your downtime in Balesport, uh, finished off this quest, and are getting ready to move on and do other things. So, uh, I throw the, the ball into your court. Uh, what is it that you all want to do? Uh, the, the three of you plus Hugh Seafeather, who's here in spirit. I would, I would like you to log into your YouTube. Also, there's four of us plus... Oh, no, I guess there isn't four of us because Sean's not got a new character here yet. Correct. Um, I want you to go to your YouTube. And for the VOD for last episode... I want you to name it Ghosts in the Seashell. <laughs> All right. I will make a note of that. <clears throat> no. Okay. I have a really important thing I want to do, Greg. Yes. And I what, hope you are course? on board with this. So I'm going to approach Gorik and you and Janla as well. I'm going to say, so I've given this a lot of thought. And I know that we have a very important journey ahead of us. And I would like to try how far I have progressed as a druid. And you two are, or you three, I guess, are three of the most powerful people I know. And in case anything goes wrong, I would like you to be there and make things 
you know, make sure things don't go out of hand. Would you would you do that for me? Can you elaborate at all on what you're planning to do here? Do you want us to fight you and see how strong you've gotten? Are you? Oh no! To... Oh no! Don't fight! No, I, 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 I wouldn't stand a chance. I mean, General's gonna burn me to a crisp within a second. You know. Um. No, I have to perform a ritual. To um, restore somebody. I just want you to be there. I will definitely come with you. Hugh agrees. He says, oh, oh, of course. We'd be happy to see this druidic ritual. Will there be anything to eat there? I heard there um, could be quite a party. You, you're can spending make you... too much time with Sambar. <laughs> <laughs> I can make you a good berry, but you know, I didn't intend to bring any food, so... He looks disappointed, but still is uh, willing to come along. <laughs> okay, is Gory going to tag along as well? Okay, right. So I guess I'm gonna... I guess I'm gonna... Um, I need a place where there's like some peace and quiet, so maybe in front of the Temple of the Clerics of the Wave. Sure, right? yeah, maybe. so the Temple of the Crashing Wave is kind of on the outskirts of Balesport. There are, there are two ports in Balesport, uh, if you mm -hmm. can kind of see the map, I guess. Uh, the city itself uh, butts up against the ocean and has an ocean port where you fought with the... Um, with the traders uh, and the Merrill and the guard captain there. Uh, mm -hmm. And there's also a port along the river on the east side of the um, of the city. And on the other side of that port lies the Temple of the Crashing Waves, uh, where you teleported back from the, uh, from the city of Raekwon. Uh, it's secluded and, some time, and, uh, and far enough away from the dock that you don't hear the, the ongoing noises and smells of the city. Um, but uh, it isn't so far away that you're just out in the wilderness. Uh, you can still see the, the peak of the temple kind of up and above uh, the, the, the hillside. All right. So Rose is going to, to lead her party over there. I'm just going to say, um, you might, you might want to stand back a little bit. I'm not sure how powerful this is going to be. And, um, she takes the tiny pot of plant <laughs> that Gorik has given her a while ago. And you can see that the, the pot of plant has been taken, you know, she's, it's been taken care of, right? Like it has tiny green leaves and it, it's alive. You know, this, it's still a tiny plant. Is this the one from Raekwon that was like... Exactly, thousands? from the sunken city that yeah. was sitting in the library there. Yeah, and Rose has given still alive. <laughs> a lot of thought. And she's going to put the tiny little pot of plant onto the ground. Um, she takes off the pot and she's going to wrap like the roots into two little bundles. So there's one bundle and then there's a second bundle. Place that, so it looks like little legs pretty much. I was going to say, so you've got, yeah. you've got the tree and then two little, mm -hmm. little balls. Just like that. Two on little. Either, on either exactly. side. Of, okay. All right. Yep. Just like that. Yep. Hopefully and you're then, planting it in some fertile earth. Oh, it's just it's just uh, sitting there like too little. It's just standing there for now. And <laughs> she's going to take a deep breath and she takes off her staff from her back. And she starts rubbing like the the large quarter staff between her hands faster and faster. And as she does as she does so, there's like a wind picking up, right? As it gets stronger and stronger. And she blows onto her staff and the wind just transports over to the little plant. And the little plant gets like shaken, right? And you see like leaves just, you know, waning away from the little plant, but it still it still holds strong. And at some at some point, it takes like a proper five minutes. It's a pretty long time. Um, out of the out of the stem of the little plant, there's a tiny little head flopping up in the middle of it, which is just like a bulb opening up, like, whoop, and it's right there. And Rose looks pretty exhausted, and she says, "Ah, ah, it's done." Um, I I want you all to welcome the newest member of our party. As I cast Awaken on the little shrub that we got from the library using my stuff of the woodlands. The, the little tree, like, sh shakes its branches at you like a little wave. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
<laughs> I'll wave back. So, so, um, we still need a name for them. You know, I haven't, I haven't named them yet. It would be kind of rude. Do you, do you have an idea? Oh. I am root. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? <laughs> well, I guess that's fine. That works for me. We could call him. We could call him Rayquan, and just Ray for short. Ray for short. That works too. Well, actually, I probably Ray. shouldn't assume. Is it a boy plant or a girl plant? Oh, we can ask them. They have an uh, arbitrary intelligence score of about ten, so I think they can talk. If they want to, and I can talk to small plants. So, do you have a do you have a name, wise one? Oh no, no, I I just started existing right now. <laughs> I am right. I'm well, we will uh, we will call you Ray for now. Ray, is that okay? It sounds like a good name. Yeah, Ray. I like Ray. Reminds me of something. <laughs> I'm not sure what. <laughs> Everybody will... loves Ray. It's okay. <laughs> Everybody does love I will... Ray. <laughs> I will turn to the party and say, so Ray here has been sitting in this library for thousands of years. And I figured, you know, they might have heard a word or two from people quietly whispering. So they've probably accumulated a lot of wisdom over the years. And maybe there's one or two secrets they would like to share with us eventually. But... It is easier, you know, if they're actually what we call awakened. Oh, that sounds really interesting. I feel like I just <laughs> lived like a day ago or a couple days ago. I don't... <laughs> well, sometimes the first thing I, I heard remember... time passes quickly if you're having fun. First thing I remember is we were down underneath the water. That was crazy, and then. You appeared! And I was like, hello! And you didn't say anything. And so I was carrying around in your bag for like, I don't know, a couple of days. And then we've been up here. The city is stinky. It's not very refreshing. I guess it's better than the water, though. The water was salty. I didn't like that. I'm sure you'll be, you'll be fine. Eventually. We might go to a forest pretty noonish. So you might like that place better. Oh. What's a forest? Oh, you don't know what a forest is? I can teach you. Sounds fun. <laughs> yes. So, um, Ray is uh, Rose's greatest achievement since becoming a druid, because it might not seem like it, but being able to awaken a creature is a pretty big deal. So awesome. So, he's very you successfully one. awaken Ray, the little bonsai tree <laughs> from the library of, of Raekwon. Um, so, uh, just mechanically, uh, Ray was a dead plant when you found him. Pretty uh, much, and yes. And then you druid crafted him uh, under some, some fun Goric rules, and <laughs> now you have essentially, like, a three-year-old, like a, not three-year-old, like a three-day-old, four-day-old bonsai tree that you have awakened to, to share your experience. Well, you never with. know if you might get his, you know, his um, knowledge back from his days past. You know, it can always happen. Yeah, so she maybe basically, just gotta... she basically tree incarnated it. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. So I'm, I'm going to give him a little space to sit on my shoulder. Nice. He can sit there. Nice. And from time to time, I'm going to wet his little, uh, his little feet so he gets them, you know. You get some water in there in the system. Nice, Ray the this. Ray the bonsai tree. I want I want Ray to have like to be like incredibly introverted and have crippling agoraphobia. So like when we get <laughs> like to a plane, he's just like. <laughs> I'm gonna go into the backpack. We can talk later. It's yeah, fine. <laughs> he sees all the other trees and he's like, "Oh my god, they're enormous and they're obviously really clicky." And I can't. No, I, I can't. Yeah. Oh man, I understand that feeling. <laughs> For three thousand years, I lived under the ocean as the only plant within eyesight. <laughs> Alrighty. So, um, with the with the awakening of Ray done, uh, the three of you, four of you, uh, are in Balesport. Your mission is accomplished. The the city is saved. You have been paid handsomely, uh, if even though roundaboutly for your good deeds. Uh, what is your plan 
What do Rose and Janmar and Gorik and Hugh wish to do next? Find my character sheet. <laughs> good start. Nice. So, Janla. Yes, Rose? Can you hear me? When we first met the Silver Lord, I was really worried because he felt incredibly strong and very foreign to me. I mean, most things feel very foreign to me, but you know, in a dangerous way, right? But now we went underwater, and apparently there's some kind of god who takes over people and mind controls them. So how do you think, in comparison, is the Silver War Lord stronger than an underwater tentacle god? Or is the tentacle god stronger than the Silver Lord? And on a scale of evilness, which one do you think is worse? Is evil is a word? Evil. It is. Ability. It is. It is definitely a word. Evil. Okay. Let's let's stick with that. One. Um, I say the Silver Lord is worse. Uh, I have no reason for it other than that he defeated us, uh, so therefore he is more powerful and worse. I think perhaps this was it called the empty is it, or the hunger the empty the empty. I think perhaps. You, our experiences with the Silver Lord are tainting your opinion, Janlar. The, the Silver Lord was an entity of false faces and inner corruption. This, but our opponents who have served the Silver Lord before have all done so willingly. Perhaps they were tricked into doing it, but they have made their choice to worship their false god. This empty, it seems to subvert the will of any it touches. It takes their minds away from them. It creates thralls out of unwilling participants. This is a terrible crime. This is true. I cannot say that this tentacle creature is worse than the Silver Lord. If it is locked away underwater or in the far realm, then it may be less of a threat than this Silver Lord is. But from what I have seen, the empty is a concern. Not as much of a concern as the Collector having another Philosopher's Stone. How are there two of these things? We need to round them up. This is not acceptable. <laughs> <clears throat> No wonder he's so old. He's subverting the natural order of life. He's artificially prolonging his life with magic. He's no better than a lich. We must end him. Or steal his Philosopher's Stone and let nature take its course. That would also be fine. Hugh, how do you feel about this? You worked for him. Do you think you can get us in for a heist? I'm planning a heist. Now. Uh, you know, I, I think it would be rather easy to get in. Uh, the, the problem is... Uh, I don't, I, I don't think it's a good idea. Like, he's pretty strong. He's got a lot of magic items. You know, easy to walk in. I, I, I've never seen anyone try to steal from him, but, uh, eh, your call. So the thing is, we've beat the person who's trying to summon the Silver Lord once. We had no chance of doing anything against the tentacle beep. I don't know if we necessarily beat the Silver Lord anyway. I mean, at least we didn't lose, you know. I would call it a draw. Let's call it a draw. I'm not sure we can take on this God of the, you know, of the depths. And I'm pretty sure there's no way we can beat the Collector. He's he's much wiser than any of us. Not At least right now. I agree. I 
do not think we should match with the collector. I do not like him, but uh, we've been warned not to mess with him. It worries me that we haven't heard anything about the Civil Lord in such a long time. I agree. I was really fearful in Sarmanath, but it appears my fears were unnecessary. Real quick, we didn't get like 3,000 XP for last session, right? Oh. Okay. <laughs> we did All not. Right. It's like 11 something. That's what, that's what I needed. That's what I needed to level up. So like, you yeah. guys didn't really do much last you session. You got 1,100. Yeah, you would for... get a 1,100. Okay. I feel uh, like... We... Sorry, go ahead. We... Sorry. I feel like we need to talk to people who might have at least a rough idea about what is going on. Where, where roughly on the map was the the grave something city? You don't know. No oh. one of the party has ever heard of Graveskeep. Oh, it wasn't on the map. It was no. just, it was just named. You you found scrolls bearing old English style names like ye olde terrible author <laughs> English, ye uh, and you found two scrolls each undamaged for Far Arden, Talon Bridge, Colvier Door Castle, Sarmanath, Hawks Hollow, Coldwater, Balesport, Nestor. Uh, but you also found uh, two scrolls to a place called Graveskeep, which you have never heard of um, at to this point, and is not on any known map. Or I believe it might be the Vanishing City. Uh, it might be the old name for the city. I suspected the same, in fact. Do we still have the scrolls? I do. I'll take the scrolls out, and I've been looking over each night. We could, we could blindly throw ourselves in that direction and see where we end up. Perhaps, though, you seekers, looking at the two seekers in the party, need to return to Sarmanath and make a full report on the rift magic we found in Rayquan. I do not know what your procedure is. Well, we should at least tell them about you know who. Actually, speaking of procedure, Gorik sits down and starts casting sending. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, what is your sending? Uh, no I'm, guarantee I'm, I'm going to be able to keep within 25 words. <laughs> yeah, I... I'm 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 gonna I'm gonna type it out and and get to 25 words. So okay. give me give me a second. All right. Gorg okay, begins I... casting a spell in the middle of this conversation. Apropos sending, Jen and I had written down a message last time, which was pretty much, um, Hey Algernon, how's it going? Where are you? Lots of love, Jen Lauren, or not so much love. <laughs> <laughs> um, Jetla and Rose, how did anything come back from that? Well, you had made a like fifty-five or sixty words. Exactly. Sending, but we and sat Jan down said together, you'd work right? On it. Okay. Uh, <laughs> if you would like to that. make that sending to uh, Algernon, you may. I need to look up the way sending works just briefly when you say, before I tell you. I think it doesn't work if the person's on a different plane. So. I need to know exactly how the spell works. So I will look that up just briefly. Do you want to give a little uh, recap of what you settled on for your, your sending to Algernon? Oh, but that was pretty much what I just said, you know? Okay. Hello, Algernon. So Are you in danger? <laughs> 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 Where the heck are you? All right, I need you to roll me a d100. Actually, I want the person sending it to roll. Uh, Jandlar, oh, roll love. me a d100. All right. And then I will roll the same. Okay. Um, it takes some time, actually. Longer than you anticipate. In fact, Janlar, you might even believe that the message had failed for a brief moment. Until, eventually, you hear back in your, in your brain. Um, uh, I've been caught. 
Please help. And that's all. Sorry. Um, upon hearing this, I'll immediately excited to go to Rose and say, he's been caught. He answered me, but he's sounds like he's been caught. Well, Not as who exciting are you talking about? about? Algernon. All right. Wait, what do you mean caught? That's all he said. He's been caught. Remind me who Algernon is. He's the uh, librarian of the Seekers of ah, Salmon okay. Library. All right. Greg, I have my... And one of my best and only friends. <laughs> <laughs> Jan <Lo> looks hurt. <laughs> one. I said one, Jan. Like, Sam can't, can't vibrates on your hip as well. Sam is shaking you. What's your message, Gorik? Uh, it is... Uh, I'm, I'm tweaking a couple of words so I can get a please in there. There we go. All right. I, Lord Keeper, I have discovered the Collector owns two Philosopher's Stones. I suspect this is the secret to his unnatural lifespan. Please advise, Gorg Grave Metal. He only has one, though. I thought um... he had two. We have the second one. You you own the the one. He told you, essentially, I sent you down there. I thought that I already had that Philosopher's Stone. But it turns out I have a different one if you found one down there, is essentially what he said. Right. So, uh, so, so the one that was down there was his, and he's just kind of letting us keep it now, but... He never specifically asked for it, and you guys conveniently didn't offer it and so okay. it has remained in your possession to this point um the high keeper eventually gets back to you uh and says um servant gorik i am certain that your judgment uh will be correct in this matter i i leave i leave you to deal with the collector as you see fit um, and if he needs more words, a second message comes sometime after and says, um, I urge caution. The Collector is known through, through many chapters of the, of the great book. Um, he has been friend to many, uh, many a dwarf over many a generation. Gorik, Gorik turns and looks at the party and goes, I think my church has been corrupted. We may have to destroy them all. <laughs> I'm just like, do you want to sit down and discuss that over a cup of tea or? Tea would be lovely. Great. Let's have a talk. <laughs> <sighs> and we have a little talk and I say, so. I know this might not be the best moment. Because maybe the world might be falling apart. But I think I might have to go and save my friend. Okay. Have I met this friend? Have you been to... Yeah, yeah. Like, you've been to the library, right? In Samana? Had he already left by the time Gorik joined the Oh, party? he might have left. I yes. think he did. I, I think mm -hmm. he was already gone. Who was the one who, who gave me the book about the dwarf? I believe that he had already left by the time Gorik joined the party. Yeah. He had left the old book of dwarven lore behind after he had taken off from Sarmanath to seek out uh, what he was seeking. Um, so Gorik, I don't believe, would have met him explicitly. The way Absolutely. Janlar and Tom and um, Vilith or Gorik Vilith or Mac, and Gormac maybe. and all of Emily. Yeah, yeah. Didn't he say he was going to the Vanishing City? He was. I think he was going to a tower. He said he was to a tower that sometimes disappears. Is what the old man said. Uh, the Collector had informed you that he was going to a great library beyond the Elvendar um, that sometimes appeared in this plane of existence and sometimes was not there. It's a spire on the far... I just found my notes. It's the spire on the far state side of the Elvendar. Apparently. 
It's called the Scrivener's Tower. Well, I mean, Jen Lama likes books, right? In indeed. If you need to say your friend, I will definitely accompany you. Well, there might also be a lot of knowledge there. So if we need further information to know what we want to act upon, you know, sometimes books are a good idea if you don't know where to go. Great, then it's settled. <laughs> I slam the table. Let's say we're going to the tower. <laughs> Excellent. How are you getting there? I mean, is there a train or are we taking the... I don't know. <laughs> taking the train. All right. Uh, so uh, if you look around Balesport, uh, the, a common mode of transportation is to sail up and down the river um, between Balesport and Coldwater, um, which is where I thought you guys were going while you were here. Coldwater is correct. Yes. Um, well, however, we could go to Coldwater and then start walking from there if we wanted to, right? Mm -hmm. right. I feel like we should... We, we could do Bearsport Cold Water, go from Cold Water to Salmonath, take the boat up north. Is that feasible? Right, because I also still have a slight crush on that Spriggan living in the other city, possibly. So <laughs> we say we could just we could just teleport to wherever we need to go, Hawks Hollow or Sarmonath. What's wrong with walking? Now that we have the ability to teleport, why walk? Because doing simple things keeps you grounded. And abusing power is never a good thing, and you should keep really strong spells for emergencies. Like when you have to revive a tiny bonsai plant. Uh, but we have multiple scrolls for each location. You said we need to go north of Elvendar? Well, eventually. That's a, that's a long way. We're going to walk the whole way to Elvendar? Oh, you never complain about walking. What happened to you? I have the ability to teleport now. Okay, well, how... Well, isn't tele... Is teleporting safe? Yes. It is completely safe. I've had no right. I've had no problems well, in the past. You're a professor, so I have no reason to doubt you, even though I have about twenty wisdom. Can I make an inside check? No. <laughs> 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 I don't know the teleport spell, okay. so I don't know. Let's General, spell. let's do this. Let's walk or let's take the boat. Is it safe to take a boat, General? I've never uh, taken a boat before. Is it safe? Is it safe to take a boat up the way to Coldwater? I'm sure. It sounds okay, like so how about we take way. the boat there, and then there's another... Wasn't there another circle in Coldwater as well? Well, I was thinking we should just teleport all the way to Sarmath, uh, and then go up the the river through the, the middle. But I don't think the elves like that. Probably not. I mean, if I had a circle at home and somebody would just pop up, even though I did not invite them. Oh, we can go back to Sarmanath, no problem. We we told them we were coming back. They invited us. We don't have the ability what to if, teleport to Elvendar. What if I still want to stop by Coldwater? Uh, then we'll go to Coldwater. And we can, teleport, we can teleport there. Great. Wait, we can teleport to Coldwater? Yeah. Fantastic. Let's do it. <laughs> Are we missing Sean's character if we All teleport right. straight to cold water? <laughs> I'm slightly worried now. You're Please okay. don't let us get You're it. okay. Uh, so you're going to teleport to cold water using the teleportation yeah. okay. circle. First underneath. of all, there's one thing. There's one thing. We still have the princes of the Naga, right? Like the Triton princes here. The Duke, what has, the Duke Duke. has taken them under is, their custody. Is she, okay, so yeah. he's taking care of that. Yes. Great. Fantastic. Just making sure that she's not still at the temple like... No, uh, eventually after <laughs> hearing your stories, the, the Duke has taken the custody of Princess of the Triton and Ollie. 
um, and is attempting to find them a suitable place to stay as a refugee from the Meryl beneath the right. waves. Okay. So we'll attempt to go to cold water, and I want to try to find Reed, and if I can't find it within a few days, we're just going to leave again. But, you know, right. it's just the... You send you make your way back down the temple, uh, past the temple near the river bank. Uh, you find your little secluded cove, uh, and inside is the teleportation circle, exactly as you left it. Janlar takes out a piece of chalk and begins marking down the runes at the apex points of the of the teleportation circle. Pulls out a scroll and begins to chant the words. As he does, the it disappear off the side of the scroll itself, consuming it. Uh, the the light of magic swirls about the runes, and eventually a large uh, glowing portal of light opens through the width of the circle uh, and stands, allowing you to step through it. Okay. Trevor, you would never lie to me, would you? I lied. There is definitely possibly danger. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, we have a minute, and I step through the circle. All right. Janlo steps through the circle. 30 seconds. I'm like, 30, 29. <laughs> he right leaves after, you there counting. Hey. Like, come on, right man, after Janlar steps through, Gorik goes, I'm pretty sure teleportation circle is actually one round. And I push Rose through and then jump through. <laughs> <so>. <laughs> like 25. And I just like step All right. Forward. Gorik and, and, uh, and Hugh push Rose through and you all find yourselves uh, in a teleportation circle in a very cold environment. You're immediately wet. There is dampness everywhere. You are immediately cold. It is at least 30 degrees colder here than it was inside the relative warmth of the city of Balesport. Uh, the sky is dark and cloudy. The... the, the um, heavy gray clouds cover the sky uh, and you look around you find yourself in the middle of uh, what could only be described as a field um, growing out of the the magic circle at your feet are large reeds and plants uh, swampy uh, mosses uh, just to the, your east as you look over you see a towering city made of stone um, with high walls uh, next to what is is a large river uh, and a bank you are some uh, 300 feet away away from this this towering thing um you are high on the crest of a hill uh kind of looking down at it you see a reed covered uh lake uh larger than well no about the same size as the great lake near sarmanath uh if you are familiar with it uh the um immediate shock i think of the cold probably wakes you all up uh, and puts you on like kind of a high alert adrenaline rushing through you you hear the the cries of um wild beasts and the cries of uh of fey creatures as well um, immediately recognizable and different in their more human tones uh as they race along the um kind of dark and hidden areas near this uh and near this place of cold water. Well. So I am here. going it worked to... Again. I'm going to wrap Ray into a blanket. His little head is sticking out, but he's going to be warm and a great limb in my arm. Oh, thank you. It was very cold. You're welcome. I'll take care of you. Don't you worry. Oh, good. This place smells no different. A very different place. I haven't been to a place like this. I know. It's weird. It makes my bark crawl. I know that feeling. Janla, lead the way. Um, yeah. I'll start leading the way toward the big city. All right. Full water. You begin traipsing your way towards the big city. Um... Excellent. As you make your way to the um, city itself, you find that much like Sarmanath, there is a, a set of kind of slums uh, that uh, ap that approach the city uh, leading up to the main gates. You teleport it in from the other side uh, of them. Uh, and as you make your way across the... Uh, 
the kind of meadow here, the plain. Uh, you are finding your way to the, the center of, uh, of cold water. Uh, lean tos and um, small dripping huts of, of little towns uh, make their way into view as you begin walking up through here. Uh, you also see a, a kind of a strange sight as you're uh, making your way here. Uh, walking along the road uh, with a wide pointy blue hat dripping raindrops and mist and dew down on a, a strange uh, kind of covering cloak around him uh, is, a, is a single figure. Um, clearly has been out in the in the weather for some time uh, and is is slowly making his way from an opposite direction towards this slum in cold water um, as uh, seemingly unsurprised by your approach and keeping his head down into himself uh there excuse me hi um, I don't know if you noticed, and apparently sometimes it is considered rude to tell people about their appearance, but I just wanted to let you know that y your head is dripping. But it's not dripping on me. I mean, technically that's correct, but if you were to enter a house, I think it would be, you know, reasonably polite to make sure that your hat does drip onto the floor i'm not i'm not walking into a house oh. where are you going i'm looking for something how tall is he um uh, how tall are you i'm four foot ten yeah you liar sean you're a goddamn gnome i knew it all along <laughs> <laughs> You're looking for a house? No. Well, I mean, I guess it was a pleasure meeting you. I'm very sorry for interrupting you on your way. Uh, have a wonderful day. I hope you're not dripping onto anybody. Okay, be careful. Death is following you. No, that's just Gorik. You know, he looks like he's having a rough day, but he, you know, you should see him no, when he's it's, it's following him, too. Wait. Trust me, little one, I've noticed. Gorik is, is like probably I... four inches taller than he is. I turn I immediately turn around. Jenna, do you see anything? No, but as I said in Sarmanath, I'm afraid we're being followed. So wait, are you telling me everybody knows that somebody is following us and nobody has educated me and I can't see anybody and I'm the only one? Well, most people can't see it. This is but I can this read is your where it's yeah, pretty. Sad. This is where Ray is like, oh no, yeah, you're totally being followed. <laughs> <laughs> wait, did you did you say you can read my aura? Yeah, it's pretty sad. No, There's you hold to... on. That's not a nice thing to say. Jenna, do you think he's insulting me? Did he just say my aura is sad? No, 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 not like that. I mean, yeah, explain like, yourself. <laughs> it's, it's sad. There's a lot of ways to be sad, but you're kind of sad as the only sad that you see when somebody's died recently. Well, Jenna excuse me. Look very sad. But that's also a very rude thing to say. You know, usually if you see that somebody is sad, that the first thing you do is not to go towards them and say, hey, you look pretty sad. Oh. I'm sorry. Are you? Because I can't read your aura, so I can't tell if your aura is currently sorry. No, I, I am. Is he? Can somebody see this? <laughs> can, somebody can you read his aura? <laughs> can you read uh, aura? I could cast Zone of Truth, but... <laughs> It seems a little overkill for this. I think as you point at him, like, can anyone see this? Hugh flips down his his little monocle that he got like, from the collector and starts looking at him. He says, "Not magical." <laughs> okay. So, what is your name, Traveler? Quartz. Wait, he's a non-magical aura reader. I think that just makes him a quack. Let's just move on. <laughs> Well, that's not how things well, work. Right. But I do have other magic. 
Quartz, what did you say you were looking for? There's something wrong around here. That's what I've been saying since I got to this party. Around here in cold water or around? Yeah. Maybe it's you. Issues do seem to follow us. Was, wherever we seem to go. Problems. Was something wrong in cold water more than five minutes ago? Well, yeah. Well, then but I feel like we can't people. really be blamed. Maybe it was foretelling you. All right, little one. Tell me what you know about divination magic. Nothing. All right. Well, let's leave that to the experts then, shall we? <laughs> Do you know one? No, I know a transmuter. No, I don't. I know an abjurationist, and I know a grave domain cleric, and I knew a I fire know domain cleric. <laughs> And then we have a naturalist over here, so your little quartz thing with your crystals, so like you're you're already stepping into the druid's territory there with your naturals. I mean, to be fair, How I'm always kind are of your um, strange rock-like uh, growths on your skin. Hmm. How how covered are you? Like, do can Gorik and all of them see these strange growths on your skin? Oh yeah, no. There's definitely yeah. like probably at least one patch going over his cheek. Mm -hmm. Um, I think it's like pretty patchy. Maybe like thirty to forty percent of his skin. Oh is okay. Overall. Okay. Yeah. You oh. almost look like you're suffering from maybe like sickness or disease. Um, maybe on like first glance, but if yeah. you get a good look, it's clearly like a it's like a rock right. over his skin. Right. Okay. I'm gonna say, oh, hold on. What? You got something there. I poke him in the cheek. Yeah. Yeah, I've got a lot of those. Is it normal? And I tap against it with like a barky thing and I'm like, ding, no, ding, ding. no, no. <laughs> I'm usually told it's not. Well, maybe you're what's wrong with this place. Oh, gosh, I hope not. <laughs> How long has it been going on for? I just got here a little bit earlier. Did you detect something was, something was wrong here before you got here? Yeah, no, as soon as I showed up, I could feel that something was off. Mm, so as soon as you showed up, something was off. That's pretty suspicious, if I don't say so myself. <laughs> well, I wouldn't be able to tell before I got here. Mm. That's also true. He has a point. But there, there is usually something wrong in most places I go. That's also true. I can absolutely vouch for this. But maybe that's because most places are wrong. In the first place. Right. Quartz, tell us a little about yourself. Well, obviously, you you are an astrologer, but what, what, what else do you do? I just help people. You seem to know we were coming. He just kind of, just kind of looks at you. <laughs> how, how do you help people? What do, what do you do? Do you give them money? Do you bake them food? Do you put curses on them? Oh, please be food. Please be food. Please. No, I, I'm not very good with... Well, can I guess you I can make crackers? Better. Like the salty kind? How about crackers? Cra no, no. How about money, says Hugh? <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I don't, I don't have very much money to give. I don't know. Usually there are problems, dangerous things that are that are plaguing towns, and I go around and I try to fix them. For what? For what? You're making yourself out to sound like quite the hero. Are you a seeker, Quartz? No. Do you have any interest in becoming a seeker, Quartz? What is that? It's probably best that you don't. It seems like death follows seekers more heavily than any other group of people I've ever encountered in my life. The last okay, I crab fishermen gonna... die less often than seekers do. I look to Rose. Uh, I think his ability to read auras might be really useful. I remain unconvinced about this aura reading thing. <laughs> <laughs> it's the sort of mumbo jumbo that every medicine woman in the town spouts to try and get you to give them a copper. What do you mean? A, what does medicine woman mean? <laughs> <laughs> well, 
Well, you know the type. The, the, the white lady with the dreadlocks and the house full of crystals and weird-smelling plants who insists that she can heal your chakras by laying her hands on you and, and, and chewing some sort of root while she rings the weird bell from the other side of the world. You know the type. I mean, um... <coughs> I feel kind of bad for his face. I think that's you think we could just can we just keep him? I think that's part of his skin. I I don't think that's it. You don't you you don't have stone on your face. That's not how it works. And I'm a wood person. I don't person. have bark either. It's true. Well, that's that's your own mistake. But there's obviously a difference between being a wood person and being a stone person. If you can't see that, that's on you, right? I'm uh I'm still here. <laughs> Sorry, what did you say? <laughs> Perhaps he's, perhaps he's an Earth Genasi. I've heard that the elemental races have have touches of their elements imbued within their skin. Okay. What's what 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 exactly? Um, what what are you again? About this time, you begin to notice that the Denzians of the like nearest slum on the edge of cold water have all kind of started to look out of their houses. There's a small gathering of just people in the streets looking at the five strangers sitting around and conversing just outside of their little um, huts. In the in the pouring down rain, right? Well, it's not pouring down rain, but it is wet and damp and like it's almost as if the mist itself is is making everything around here wet. Okay. So is is Quartz's hat spontaneously generating moisture to drip if it's not actually raining then? It's collecting a... the dew in the mist that has moistened your clothes and everything okay. else around you since you've been It's not here. a minor oh. magic item, the ever dripping hat. <laughs> <laughs> no. Oh man, I should have taken that. <laughs> yes. It's like a cloak of billowing. It's just the hat of dripping. I just took this I'm on board. I that, is now, that is now a magic item that you can find in the world. The yeah. ever dripping hat. There's actually, there is such a thing, but it's a cloak. It's always <laughs> dripping water. Honestly, if you want this to be an ever dripping hat, I'll make it an ever dripping hat. <laughs> <laughs> Get out my potted plant underneath it. Yeah. Up to you. If you want this to be a hat, a magic item of ever dripping, like you can have it. <laughs> I think that's hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> sure, that works for me. I honestly thought so that what the, thought it was that. And nice. He All wears right. it because nobody else would. Right. <laughs> yeah. He feels bad because nobody else wants to wear an ever dripping hat. <laughs> <laughs> Gives you advantage on persuasion checks to get someone to help you because you just look so pathetic with your yeah. hat. It's always yeah. wet. Yeah. <laughs> You've disadvantage though to get a room for the night because yeah, for every, sure. you're always leaving a dripping mess on the floor. <laughs> anyway, I put the, my, the people I put don't interrupt you, but head. they do. You do begin to notice that they are staring at the the five strangers concernedly. So why did we come to cold water? I know Rose wanted to come here. I'm looking for Reed. Spriggan. Well, I think her name is actually Blossom, but... Do you have any where, idea where would we be? find Where would we find this, this Reed Blossom? Well, apparently in cold water. All right, well, let's... Let's at least achieve that basic level of competency and get into cold water then. Okay. I can't, I can't Quartz, would you like to walk with us? It looks like you are also heading that way. Yeah. No sense no no sense no sense doing that really awkward thing where we all pretend like we're saying goodbye to each other and then we end up walking the same direction and have to pretend like we Oh god, I hate that part. Right, That's exactly. Let's just invite Quartz to walk with us and then when we get to the city we can part ways unless we happen to be staying at the same hotel really awkwardly too. <laughs> All right, you begin marching your way through the, the slums leading up into cold water. Uh, the 
groups kind of eye you as you go, kind of giving you a, a wide berth, watching you intently. Uh, but after your conversation along the street, you find no interruption until you reach the large stone wall that rises high above you. Unlike any of the other cities, probably, that you've met, this has the, the biggest and largest walls of it. They are craggy at the top, almost like they're naturally made up there, or at least have been weathered in some strange way. Um... They are almost glisten up and down the side of the wall with the, the dampness of the mist around you, though no moss or anything grows upon it. Um, you see two fully armed soldiers at the front of the gate, uh, and you spot the glimmer of more uh, walking along the tops of the walls. Uh, as you approach, they both kind of place their ha armored hands out, both of them with large kind of shields, almost of the tower variety that they rest on the ground, that come up to their shoulders. Um, both of them are wearing a, a rather particular hooked sword. Uh, it seems like it would be quite good at grabbing or snatching with the edge of it. Um, they look you up and down and say, Hi, welcome to, to uh, Coldwater. Uh, please state your business. I'm here to help. Uh, vagrant, I see. The rest of you? I'm looking for Blossom. All right. Because Refugees, when you say it then? that way, it makes it sound like you're looking for a drug. Maybe you should say you're looking for an, an individual named Blossom. I am looking for an individual named Blossom. Ah, oh, very good. Uh, are you looking for a refugee or a citizen here? Ah, uh, Spriggan. Not sure if she lives there or if she's fled, but she's like... They kind of put their heads together and not... They point out towards the uh, the lake the way you came. Spriggans live out there somewhere. I haven't seen one Did come to the city Spriggans? in a while. Spriggans? Ah, yes. Community of them. Live out by the lake somewhere. Perhaps on the island in the center. Should probably look there. You, sir, you look like a wandering vagrant at best. You said you were looking to help? Yeah. Are you looking for a job? What kind of job? Ah, uh, we need always need more hands in the mines. We'll pay you a copper a day for heavy labor. I uh, not much of a not not, not much of the the heavy labor kind. I see. Well, standard entrance fee, I guess, for the city. Uh, any non-citizen, uh, we'll have you pay that up front. Uh, it will be two gold piece a head. So if I go in and I go back out and I come back in one day later, do I have to pay four gold in total? Aye. Non-citizen, no business here. Seems standard. I'll give him two. Is there a is there a kid's fee by chance? <laughs> How old are you? And he kind of gives you a look. He says, "Aye, this one seems to be plagued." And he kind of draws back a little. The friend kind of looks at you as well, off-putting, and says, You're not bringing in sickness to this city, are you? Nothing catching. Nothing catching, he says. I've heard that one before. Came here looking for Blossom. And the Spriggans live over there, outside of the city. Do we need to pay them their shakedown fees, or should we just go that way and ignore them? Your choice. Enjoy the safety of the walls or spend some time out by the cold water. Rose, we're here for you. It's up to you. Do you want to just go find the Spriggans? Have you ever met any Spriggans in your life? No. I have. Wait, Wait. yes. More than just... What? I'm a Spriggan. I do yeah. acknowledge that. Have you met any Spriggans apart from this Sprig? No. No. <laughs> I'm glad we figured this out, because if you hadn't told me before, Gorik, I would have been really upset. Okay. <laughs> there aren't a lot of Spriggans in, in Deephold. They tend to not like the industry and lack of natural lighting. Do you well, yes, have I this conversation right here? Are you coming in or not? I don't think so. 
I don't see. I don't right. see why we need to at the moment. Then uh, move along, Gorex, vagrants. Like, move along. Get Gorex, the... Gorex's eyes like roll black with with the thaumaturge, and he goes, "Blessings of death be upon you." And I oh god, he's around. doing this again. <laughs> <laughs> um, please give me a charisma roll. Uh, are you, I think you're intimidating as well. If you would like to be trained in intimidation, I will accept that. All right. One d twenty plus. I mean, I'm intimidated every single time he talks about it. You know, I just scare <laughs> yeah. myself with the image in my head. So. I'm 19. <laughs> uh, yeah, you beat their resolve. Uh, you see both of them, like, step back. They place their large kind of tower shields between you in a very defensive nature, and they immediately shut up and just and they And they look and they look really dumb, because Gorek does this as he's leaving, so they're, like, <laughs> defending my butt. Like... Yeah, yeah, exactly. They, they, yeah. They, just, they just watch with uh, cowering behind their tower shields, but Yep. New, they do not harass you anymore as you walk away. Gorik, as, 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 as we're all as, walking away, I'm going to point at one of the ones that he talked to and cast a message and just go, Damn. <laughs> 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 oh, if uh, you were in the vicinity, uh, you would have seen a dark spot welling up around his pants. As 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 Gorik, uh, as as Gorik's eyes roll normal again, he looks at one of the civilians that had like, or or the the people that had like, you know, gathered to watch, and just winks at one of them. <laughs> they give you a particularly wide berth, having heard the blessings of death. Uh, yeah. The the entirety of the some of them cower in their in their huts and whatnot, but uh, many of them just are are watching you in the streets with wide eyes and giving you a, a, a large berth around uh, the party. Oh. I'm gonna have a, a quick look at Quartz. Does he look like a child to me? Uh, yeah. Yeah, he's, uh... Aside from, like, the, the patches of, like, uh, crystal, like, stone on his skin, he looks like a pretty normal kid. One of his eyes is, like, bigger than the other a little bit. It makes him look a little bit weird. Wait, are you even supposed to be out at that hour? Who's gonna stop me? I mean, a responsible adult? You see any of those around? Garik, how many old? Like, you're a hundred and three hundred something years old? Yep. You should be <laughs> the responsible one. I wouldn't call him responsible. How do you know? Well, responsible people don't usually try to intimidate the, the wall guards when they're walking away. Uh, yes. And I, I, I bend over and I look at him and I say, but old people like to put up at the young whippersnappers in their place. And then I keep walking. <laughs> well, I'll just say, okay, listen. You can stay with us until we find your parents. And then you're going straight to bed. You don't want to find my parents. Parent. Is it parent? That? Singular? Yeah. If we're if we're lucky, we'll we'll never find her. Okay, well then I we can't just So if I look into this tidy book here right here page one second <laughs> I read it just yesterday. Always takes me. Okay, there, there we go. There we go. Ahem. Children need to be supervised at all times because parents are responsible for their kids. The little bonsai tree is like, like me. <laughs> Shakes exactly. its leaves. <laughs> just like you. Just like you. So who's responsible for you then? I mean, to be fair, that tree is I am. thousands of years older than I am. So you keep saying so you're... I have like I a week of memories of most. I've been doing it for a few years. But you're a child. You can't be responsible for yourself. That's not how it works. Why not? Because you first need to grow. I'm pretty. I'm not much shorter than he is. I point over to Gorik. <laughs> and he's like... Well, what, walls tend to grow in size, you know, they in width over time. It's a different type of growing. That's why Gorik is five feet wide and five feet tall. Yeah. <laughs> Technically a ten, ten foot cube. Gorik actually takes up the five by five cube. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. <laughs> Just a Trekkins battle map. Hugh looks at you, Rose, and says, well, maybe, uh, maybe you're the responsible adult here. I mean, I've just, I mean, I'm a really young Spriggan. I guess I count as an adult Spriggan, but, you know, I'm still. I've maybe we're the you're responsible, responsible adults. responsible member of the group of Seekers that I met. I what think we should adopt him. Quartz, welcome to the team. <laughs> Thanks. What what is this team? It's a good what question. We well, we like to we like to steal things. I think. <laughs> From who? Oh, well, oh, there was big, a bad evil guy. <laughs> I don't. I haven't ever stolen anything that wasn't of historical significance in an abandoned place. Exactly, historically significant things, and then we trade them for money and gold. Actually, I'm pretty sure I donated it back to my temple. He's boring. I'm more fun. <laughs> Me and Rose are seekers of Sarmon, eh? That can be your first lesson in responsibility. <laughs> I mean, I don't really need gold. Uh, what do you need? Uh, I mean, I just kind of take care of myself. That little side-to-side -side look before you said it, I was waiting for you to say cocaine or something like Blood. that. <laughs> what, do you, what do you need? The souls of... The good the stuff. Cocaine. Okay. <laughs> you got some? <sighs> oh, God, I shouldn't have done that. I'm still sick, and that made my head hurt. Oh. <laughs> oh. Jeez. No, not as Quartz, that's as me. <laughs> Sorry, Sean. Right, I figured. Quartz, how does this uh, aura reading work? I can see it on your face. You just well, read what on my... YouTube specifically, and I kind of point at both Janmar and Rose. What does my aura look like, then? You can always tell the people who are being followed by death, because they can, they can beat it out of their face, but they can't beat it out of their eyes. And when you say followed by death, you just mean that we've had recently uh, experienced death. Yeah, but the people who experience it as much as you tend to uh, keep following it or have it follow them. I see a lot of mercenaries like you. Fair enough. I expect death will continue to follow us. Quartz, how long have you been on your own? Three years. That's, that's a reasonable amount of time to have met a bunch of people. All right, I'll buy your story for now. I still think you're kind of suspicious. I mean, my eyes don't roll black. I don't bless people with death. No, but you tell I people death is always lives better, not end them. Everyone's lives end eventually, little one. Everyone's well, lives sure. end eventually. Well, I mean, we can't just leave him here. So... Hugh claps his hands together again, like, adopt him, adopt him. You are going to tag <laughs> along until we find a responsible adult we can safely hand you over to. Is that fine with you? Rose, I'm not, you are making the mistake that anything. many adults who have not had years of experience make. The child ran away at some point. He is living his best life. Let him... Learn whatever he it is he wishes to learn, and eventually he will get older and wiser. Or he'll end up a drug-addicted prostitute in a metropolis somewhere. Like he'll have a chance. Terrible, Garik. How could you say such a thing? Eventually he will die, and when he comes back, he will have learned from his mistakes. That is Dark a is it? No. With that sentiment hanging in the air. You found we, yourselves. We, sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. With that You're sentiment fine. hanging in the air, you found your feet have taken the five of you uh, all, all the way outside of Balesport to the shores of the great kind of lake 
known as cold water. Uh, you mm-hmm. find that the, the shores are covered in large reeds uh, that stand almost three to four feet tall. Um, and there is a, a kind of a mottled lily pads and seaweed and algae and green growing along the, the lake. It is immediately apparent that the lake is, is very deep, very close by as you kind of look your way along. Uh, you lose sight of, of the shore rather quickly. Um, mm-hmm. As you stare across it, it is all it is hard to even see the other side, um, and you realize this is quite a body of water. Uh, the five of you kind of give it a look, and sure enough, as the guard intimated, there is uh, the, what looks to be a, a landmass in the somewhere in the center of this lake. Um, it takes up a, a reasonable size of your of your field of view. You think it could be an island of, of some size. Um, as it hangs out there. Uh, you kind of look across the shores of this. Uh, there are some small kind of docks and boats not too far from you uh, that kind of uh, butt up against the other slums of the area. Um, but it is largely unoccupied. It doesn't seem to be fishing boats out or people on the lake. Uh, it is cold and dark and rather still as you uh, look across it. Janla, do you know how to use these? And I point towards one of the boats. Is it just like a normal rowboat? Uh, yes, uh, it is, is exactly that. As you look across kind of the, the makeshift docks, um, there are just little kind of almost personal rowboats. You think they would fit four to six people at most? I mean, they look like basic rowboats, sure. Do you think you could get us across? To that looks, little island? It looks a little treacherous, but I'm not afraid. How calm does the water look? Still. Like, mirror still. Uh, hardly a ripple is seen across it. Um, when the... the a, a slight breeze might shift through and make the, the um, reeds kind of sway a little bit. This is almost the only thing that breaks the, the stillness of the lake's waters. Okay. Hmm. Would the island be within shouting distance? Um, conceivably, if you shouted very, very, very yeah. loud, yeah. maybe thaumaturgy okay. could get you there. Um, on a calm day with no other noise pollution, you think it would be possible, but it's not. Uh, it's not an easy shout, that's for sure. Communicating across that distance would be um, nigh impossible. Okay. Well, I'm gonna pull out at least Samba, and I'm gonna climb into one of the boats. I guess. All yeah. right. We'll climb into one of the boats. Do I? Th- what? What big creatures live in like the marshes? Are there any big creatures that live in the water that might Could live be. in the water here? Have you heard of any? There's well, an this... abolith that lives in the lake. No, no never mind. Um, let's just row. Let's just row across. All right. As you begin climbing into one of the boats, you hear the voice of a child, kind of uh, panicked and. R- begin running back off towards the slums. They're like, Dad! Dad! The Death God is stealing our boats! <laughs> Wait, can we borrow it? You, the the child like keeps running off. Happened. The Death guy is stealing them! <laughs> Hold on, I'm going to are... talk to him really fast. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start. We are borrowing it. What are you doing? We're giving it back after. <laughs> He's yeah, already, like, kind of run thing. off away from you back into the city. If you want to chase him down, you could, but whether your shouts reach him or not, he does not slow. Uh, nah. We'll bring him back. <laughs> All right. So, uh, the five of you begin uh, making your way 
out into the still lake waters. It is calm uh, and immediately cold. Um, all of you have spent some time out here in the near freezing temperatures. Uh, and as soon as you get on the lake, it is immediately colder. Uh, it seems the, the cold water is well named uh, as the dampness of your clothes uh, and the, the newfound cold upon the lake waters uh, it freezes you to kind of your, your bones. Uh, I want all of you to mark a single level of exhaustion um, for having spent this time unguarded against the cold of the cold water. Uh, your uh, as somebody this out there. who's like mixed heritage uh like my my elemental affinity is cold does that give me resistance to environmental cold of any Your kind elemental affinity is cold uh, so I will give yeah you... so, for so your, like, instead of love... instead of marking exhaustion uh immediately i will give you a constitution check against your elemental affinity uh to uh, resist the cold of the cold water uh go ahead we'll so make it a dc save? Yeah, we'll make it a DC 12 con check for you. Okay. I don't think I, I don't get the proficiency bonus for that, so I'll just do that. Make it. Yeah, so Quartz, you are largely unaffected by this. Perhaps your hat of ever dripping has played some part of it, or perhaps there's some ancestry. Uh, but uh, you, you are cold still, but uh, the effects of exhaustion do not wear upon you, uh, as it seems to for the rest of your party. Uh, the boat slips its way through the water. The only sounds uh, that you hear uh, as you go out there are the, the slow break of your oars against the still waters below you. Quickly you realize that you are quite far uh, out in this lake, and it is quite deep. As you peer down, it seems as if you stare into a bottomless uh, uh, lake. The, the, the darkness that you see below you is almost impenetrable to any of your eyes. Um... After some, probably about an hour of rowing, rowing is quite slow. An hour, maybe more has passed. Uh, you make your way to the center of this uh, landmass in the middle of the lake. Large reeds, even larger than the ones that uh, grow in the um, edges of the lake, um, sprout along the kind of outcropping here. Uh, there, there is a kind of a rockiness to the to the landmass, but there are nice kind of sloping uh, uh, soil locations where you can park the boat, for lack of a better word. Uh, the landmass is quite large now that you're this close to it. Uh, it seems like you could build a, maybe like a small village upon it, uh, should you want to, and still have room to farm or, or have some other land use. Uh, trees dot the, uh, um, the kind of rocky, hilly landmass, um, covering it in small patches. Uh, they are... Um, long, tall, evergreen trees, uh, all narrow and thin as much as they are kind of like wide and rounded as you've seen in other areas. Uh, all of them kind of drip a little bit from the, the fog of the area. Uh, as you approach, the, the sounds of living things kind of uh, approach your ears again, stepping off the boat. You hear the, the wild cries of um, birds, and you hear the, the sounds of insects and small animals going through the uh, rocky kind of grassy terrain. A few, few ribbits of frogs and other amphibians reach your ears as well, breaking the other silent, the otherworldly silence you experienced on the boat ride over. I'm going to take a deep like breath. A... What? Mm -hmm. This seems like a gloomy place to live for Spriggans. Oh, you've never been to the Gloomwood, have you? No, no, I'm from up toward uh, Elvendar. Well. I can tell you that the Gloomwood is much gloomier than this, which you can kind of tell by the name. Oh, so this is like a like a summer home? It is um, cold, but pleasant, I'd say, so far. Alrighty. Okay. You take a deep I breath in. Exactly. Um... And I look, I look at Jen and I say, how do I look? <laughs> I look her up and down. Uh, you look fantastic, like a spriggan. Great, that's good. And I'm gonna like, I'll, I'll take off my cloak. Q like nudges you in the ribs, gives you a thumbs up. <laughs> Is her cloak like covering like her branches and stuff like that? Like yeah, 
Like my cloak is, you know, covering up my body, so I'm I'd taking it off. Maybe, maybe take the hood off. Maybe show off your your natural sprigginess. After a few moments, you see kind of the the reeds off to the side of you begin to kind of shift and move. Something is approaching you through them. Um, after a, a brief moment, you see three figures uh, step forward. All of them are uh, long and thin like a reed themselves, with almost kind of segmented looking bodies. Um, their, their eyes are cool and dark like the waters of the, of the pond. Uh, and they speak to themselves in a kind of naturalistic uh, language before one of them steps forward and approaches the five of you. says, ah, it is rare we receive visitors here on the cold waters. Welcome to our island. Tell me, what is it that brings you here? I squint my eyes and I look at them. Like all these guys look like Spriggans? They do, although they have a very different look to them than Rose does. Where Rose is barky and has kind of the, the greens and, and browns of, of her home wood. Uh, these <laughs> are kind of long and thin and they are... Uh, a, the, the kind of color of reeds with a, a dark kind of hue um, interlaced within it. Um, their eyes and other features have a tendency to remind you either of still water or of the reeds themselves. Uh, they carry themselves slow and graceful um, and just kind of, you know, are, are calculating looking almost as they observe okay. the five of you. Doric will announce when they when they ask that. I'll say, uh, Her Majesty Queen first light of the sun upon the dew-soaked morning rose petals <coughs> seeks an audience. I see. And with whom? I cast Guidance on Rose. <laughs> Blossom. Blossom. I, I think your name is Blossom. They speak for a moment and go, Ah, yes, yes. The flowering, the flowering, uh, spoke that rises above the waters. Yes. And you meet her on her travels. Nope. Nope. Hmm. Interesting. Why do you seek her? Because, I mean, I am... You are very shy, this we can tell, yes. Come, sister. Where do you hail from? And they kind of, like, motion for you to follow them, and they begin slinking their way through the the kind of reedy banks of the lake. You notice that yep. they don't stray too far from the tall reeds themselves. They, As soon as they motion for you to follow, they kind of make their way back in amongst the reeds, um, where... I won't say it's like a natural camouflage because you know what to look for. You see them, obviously. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, they, they very rarely, if ever, step out of them as they as you follow. Mm -hmm. How uh, how tall are these reeds? Like, would would it obscure our vision back to the uh, back to the shore? Yes, um, okay. along the shore of the of the lake on the side near the city, the, they were about f three to five feet. Uh, the reeds here grow taller and longer. Uh, they're, they're about the size of a full-grown man. Uh, some reach higher, some reach lower, but we're talking about six-ish feet of, of reed on average. Okay, so um, as we're as we're going through them, I'm gonna occasionally cast Prestidigitation to leave like a small swirling silver, silvery mark on some of the reeds as we pass by. Oh, interesting. Make rail okay. back. In. Yeah, awesome. Uh, uh, and those will last for one hour. Awesome. You leave a, a trail of swirling silver along the reeds as you make your way through them. I think Rose is just very frozen as she's walking. Gorek, <laughs> like... Like... Oh, go ahead. You want to finish your sentence? No, that's all. That's all. Oh, okay. Gorik will like reach up and he'll, he'll take your little etiquette book and he'll be like, Rose, these are your people. You don't need this to interact with them. Just interact. But I feel safe if I have it. 
this is for human interact. Well, this is for human like interactions. <laughs> they they look so different, or they probably are as unfamiliar with these concepts as you were when you met us. Pretend pretend you're at an unpleasant dinner party with relatives you almost never see. I've never been to a dinner party, Garg. This is not helpful at all. <laughs> Do you have some sort of... You must have gone to uh, druidic gatherings. We went to one when you received your circle. Oh, yeah. The one where I sat on the table pretty much almost by myself because I tried not to mingle with the others. Right. You've been to other parties like that before, I imagine. Does your clan gather for any events? Harvest or, or equinoxes? Yeah, or... We, we do gather. and Yeah. Just think of it being like that. A social interaction between Spriggans. I can, I can do that. What, why did you come here? To see these Spriggans. Yeah, but why? To see one specific Spriggan. I don't think Rose was prepared to meet an entire enclave of Spriggan she'd never met before. I because... think she was expecting to meet one Spriggan. It's a very yeah. different experience, right, Ray? Oh, yeah. Definitely. Trees can be really clicky. <laughs> <laughs> Quartz, you asked why we came. We came because our party has experienced a lot of death. And... Uh... Rose is here to find some happiness. Uh, she has needs a mate. No, <laughs> <laughs> she's been searching for other people like her, and we're here to see them. So, uh, as your pep talks wind down, uh, you find that you've walked a good mile or so along the sides of this uh, island. Um, and you've uh, approached a, an area where the reeds have kind of spread out in like almost a large circle. Uh, they grow inland some uh, few hundred feet as well as out into the waters themselves a few hundred feet more. Uh, and as you bra uh, break through the kind of barrier of this and step into the, the center, uh, you see kind of a, a small gathering of um, spriggans. Uh, they are all very reed-like, much like the others. Uh, some of them are um, just kind of silently sitting in the water, like seemingly asleep even, or drinking into the, the, the waters of the, of the lake. Um, others are going about um, tending to the to the various reeds. Um, uh, some of them are apparently fishing, or, or if not fishing, they're doing some kind of sorting of the of the waters around the lake. Uh, as you approach, uh, the they all kind of look up uh, and see you, uh, except for the ones that are more or less sleeping in the in the waters. Uh, they all kind of nod in unison and smile, uh, and you are, are greeted in a kind of earthy language. Uh, I don't know if you are familiar with the with the natural language of Earth, um, but uh, they are the plane of Earth. And this is what they speak, similar to Aquan, but earthen, I guess. Oh. And uh, they they all greet you uh, and a welcome to their uh, seclusion. Uh, the one who was leading you here says, We very rarely get visitors, um, but you are welcome to stay here among us. Inside our grove, he kind of points around, it is safe. From here, we, the uh, carers of us, go out and tend for the rest of, the, of the, the lake, though it can be dangerous to leave our grove. Um, they uh, kind of smile at you and say, uh, Blossom, as you call her, is a carer. She is one of the more uh, well-traveled of us. Uh, she will be back in some time. Please make yourself at home. Uh, Gorik will will kind of take Rose's hand and just kind of gently guide it to um, Sambar's hilt, and and we'll just oh. whisper just whisper to Rose, just follow Sambar's lead. He can talk to literally anyone. 
Hey, let them know if they've got any cool food. I bet you they've got interesting things to eat here. What do they eat? What do they do? <sighs> what are those people out in the lake doing? Yeah, what are they doing? I bet they're are they doing sorting it. water? That's a really weird thing to do. Yeah. <laughs> I've never sorted water before. Um, Greg, you mentioned that these guys all have, like, very calm faces, right? Yes. Very uh, does that look like a sort of serene calmness or something a little bit more haunted? Mm, I would say more of a serene calmness. I, I don't think you get the impression that these are, are ha haunted people. Um, but they're just very still. Like, the they are, they're, their face, their features, their attitude is very reminiscent of the still lake around them. Okay. Maybe less of a... I think their their face has a stillness to it, I think is a better way of putting it. Okay. Uh, excuse me, but... Do you have a warm place around here? I'm not sure what you would call it. But I'm worried about... They cock about... their head at you, like... What warmth do you need? The kind that doesn't let these people freeze to death while we're waiting. They kind of look to uh, your friends, you see. Can they not warm themselves in the waters? Chandler is shaking, like visibly shaking. <laughs> he, he thinks for a moment and says, mm, I believe we could have them go below can they swim i think so mm -hmm. he, the the one just says follow um and begins to kind of like tread out into the the waters uh in their grove um and he doesn't so much swim as he just walks along the the bank of the of the lake as it descends downward um and eventually uh pops back up realizing you're not following like come <laughs> waves his hand right. at you i'm gonna give a tiny amulet over to quartz i'm gonna be like yeah you want to put this one on and then i'm gonna turn into a frog and gonna hop <laughs> after me <laughs> oh, the the gonna look questioningly at the water. There's a very, there's a very surprised like exclamation from a couple of them as they see you turn into a frog, and then they kind of nod as if understanding what just happened. <laughs> um, and as you follow down this this guy, he walks to a large mound of mud uh, and like vegetation underneath the the water it's like a almost like a beaver dam if you've ever seen one of them underneath the the waters of the lake mm -hmm. uh you can swim underneath it through like a little hole and come up and it's dry on the inside uh and in there are some smaller spriggans like no more than a, a foot or two high oh uh, all of them <laughs> <laughs> just kind of uh uh like almost planted if you will along the the edges of the um kind of large center of the mud uh in here it is much warmer uh it seems that it is insulated from uh the depth of the water around it and the mud inside uh if you were to dry off your clothes and spend some time in here you would warm up here, Ray, go make some new friends. And I kind of push him towards the little baby Spriggan. <laughs> Ray's like, hello! <laughs> How are you? <laughs> I've been riding around on his shoulder for two days. It's really interesting. <laughs> um, Greg, what happens if you wear multiple magic items in the same general region? Like, if you had two magic necklaces, how would that, uh, how would that go? That's a good question. What magic necklaces are you wearing? <laughs> uh, Quartz takes uh, a necklace off before putting on the one that Rose gave him. Okay. And then uh, tucks that away before jumping into the water. Do we see him do that? Well, I've already jumped in, so I can't see it. I mean, assuming if he had a magic necklace on, 
We would have if seen. you had a magic necklace on, then Hugh probably would have seen it through his. Um, oh yeah, no, he would have seen that. Saw you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was it was my my uncommon magic item that yeah. I picked out. Yeah. All right. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And we're, yeah. Um. Yeah. I don't know. We're just we're staying down here until uh, Rose right. is done with this friggin's. All right. Uh, you spend some time warming yourselves with the with the baby spriggans. Uh, eventually, a uh, spriggan makes their way to you. You're not sure how long you spent down here. Uh, time is hard to tell, kind of in the in the dark under the under the waters. The spriggans mostly leave you alone. Um, a few of them will talk with Ray about to name things. I don't know how good the soil tastes probably is one of them. Um, and, uh, eventually a, a, um, another reed like Spriggan makes their way in here. Um, Blossom is about as tall as all the others that you've seen. Uh, not remarkable in terms of, um, like body shape. Um, they have the same kind of stillness to their face. Um, although they are, um, a bit more colorful, uh, than the rest of them. Uh, they're the, where the other ones are kind of a, a, a reedy light color all the way through. There are clear, not, not splotches so much, but, um, clear, like swirls almost of, uh, deeper hued greens and, um, uh, tans and beiges throughout, um, blossoms and kind of reed like skin. Um, they smile as they, as they see you all here. It says, um, I hear that uh, the uh, queen has asked for an appearance from myself. I, I am quite honored. Um, what's, what can I, uh, what can I uh, humbly do for you? Rose looks, looks at her. You know, I, she's, like, <laughs> she's, she's, she's really quiet. She just looks at her and she says, you know, I've come all this way and I've never met another Spriggan in all this time. And now you're here. And I don't know what to feel. Where are you from? I think I've met people like you before, but they were on the other side of the Elvendar. I'm from the Gloomwood. Oh, my travels. We all look like there. this. I mean, kind of, you know, not like, kind of like. Yes, Barky with leaves. As I've said, I've seen them on the other side of the Elvendar, though. I didn't know there were any in the Gloomwood. Wait, on the other? Wait. Far to the north. Past the deserts and the mountains there. I'm a carer. I travel to spread the, the protection of the grove here to where I can to different lakes and different bodies of water. Perhaps I should have gone to the Gloomwood. Oh, it's a dangerous place. That is what I was told. Well... If my father could see me now, boy, was he wrong. <laughs> Fathers tend to be wrong. He said, you know, there's nothing out there that's worth seeing. He said, we got to stay and we got to protect the forest. And there's nobody else like us out there. Quite wrong indeed, yes. We just like to stay, most of us, in one spot. When I was younger, I wandered quite a bit. I wander less now. Mostly stick to the island. Maybe I will stop wandering one day. It was good for me. So, you have met other Spriggans like me in the north. Far and you've north. yes. Are there even more spriggans, or just those? You know, mm, the reed spriggans and these. Spriggans. They tend to a, a small wood up there. 
I don't remember what they called it. Quite good. The trees grow high and wide. They lose their leaves during the winter months. Which is very strange. Our trees don't. So, where do you come from exactly? Right here. This is the uh, this is the the still water, also the cold water. But this is our home. Have your people always been here? Oh yes, as long as I can remember. As long as our what? eldest remembers as well. What about before you can remember? Well, we, we don't remember. <laughs> Have you never been curious why you are not just Reed? No. No. Not at all. We've always been. Why not be... Why would we be curious? We... we, we protect this uh this grove from the, the the dangers of you know the area we make sure that it can prosper it's uh no it's our calling you traveled all across the world and you're just telling me you're just here to protect that's not right you must know something oh well i i traveled to, to other groves i wanted to to spread the the protection that we offer see the the other areas. Nothing quite as nice as this one, though. And have you not learned anything from the other Spriggans? They're like you and me. They tend. Very few travel wide. Some live high in the mountains. They have, like, leathery appendages that let them glide around. They travel. But wherever they land, that's where they stop, and they care for it. So, do you think there's something wrong with me for not staying in my wood to protect it? Oh, no. You found something to protect, I think. She kind of points to the little guy that's wandering around with you, and kind of <laughs> gestures to the, the rest of the, of the party. I just met him today. And, I mean, Chandler looks kind of frail, but he's actually pretty powerful, and Garg is like 300 and something years old. And then, um... Oh, there are trees here I as think old as our rogue might be slightly frail sometimes, but, you know. <laughs> he's narcoleptic. <laughs> yep, he's not good with his sleep schedule, you know. I think it's the time zone. <laughs> You wake we up. Were, hey, we were just wait, in are you talking about me? <laughs> yeah. We were just in Bale's Port earlier, and we came up here, and, you know, even though they're basically on almost exactly the same latitude line. <laughs> <laughs> she just she just smiles. She says, I, I traveled where I could to, to see what I could do to, to help. If there were, if there were lands that needed my protection more than this, I held where I could, but eventually returned. You might return, too. Has it never bothered you that you're different from everybody else you're meeting, except for maybe a Spriggan or two? Should it? I don't know, should it? It's always been. Mm. It can't. That's, that's not right. Things have not always been. It's has been as long as I remember. It has been as long as our eldest remembers. How old is your eldest? She thinks. Oh, older than I. I would say four or five hundred years. I have not asked. And you've never thought about how you ever ended up as a tribe on this little island in this lake for hundreds of years? We've always been here. As long as we can remember. 
It is home. It needs protecting. Well, I guess I feel just as out of place as at the last party I've been to. What's a party? Is that a tavern? I've been to the tavern. They have very foul water. Sometimes it is. I'm just kidding. I know what a party is. Oh! Oh, okay! Sprig Great. of humor. Meanwhile, <laughs> 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 Gorik, Gorik, and Hugh, and Quartz, and Janlar are sitting over there, and and Gorik is like really intense. He's he's started like like <laughs> rearranging the sticks on the walls to do like red conspiracy theory. Threat. He's like, okay, listen, follow me on this. The God of Death is all about the fact that all things have a life cycle. Right, everything is born, and eventually everything dies. With notable right. exception of things like gods and angels. When you Why have an individual, a mortal individual, who subverts that order by creating something like a philosopher's stone and artificially prolonging their life, that is a major concern. It is a destruction of the natural order of things. The god of death can't exist if people refuse to die. This is a major problem. Have you asked the god of death? Like why can't people? Can you because not people aren't, with your god? People aren't gods. Except in some weird, you know, white woman with dreadlocks religions where everyone is their own god, but we don't subscribe to that theory. <laughs> It'd be a really weird D&D setting. <laughs> <laughs> you said I that mean, your high priest did not think he was a problem. Have you right, my high priest now god? yes, I, this was this leads me to my next this leads me to my next point. Now, the tenets of the God of Death demand that all mortal things must eventually die. Something like an elf lives much longer than something like a human, but eventually an elf passes on as well. The high, pre the lore, ma high lore keeper, there we go, of my temple said, the collector <coughs> has been known to many chapters of the temple. And it seems like he was saying that the fact that he lives forever is not a problem. Well, but wait, so the Philosopher's Stone makes it that you can live forever? In a way, yes. Are, can you not be killed by any means? That or is do you not, just not age? I believe you simply cannot die of old age. It can also cure then any ailment. Couldn't the Collector eventually die, so he's not violating the, the precepts of the God of Death? He could be killed, but the God Which of Death is not? not the same as the God of Murder. But he would still die. I mean, wouldn't the god of death and the god of murder sort of have somewhat uh, overlapping dogma? Not entirely. The god of but death is about the moment of death. Typically, this is brought about by some sort of natural cause. Same, the same as the god of murder and the god of you know diseases and plagues are different beings themselves as well. It is not but, to say it is not to say that sometimes someone chooses to murder someone using a disease or a plague. The same thing is true of sometimes the god of death receives a soul by means of someone being murdered, but they are not allies so much as uh, reluctant cousins. Mm. But I guess what I mean is if he can eventually die as soon as somebody kills him, then how is he violating the god of death's mandate Preset? because what, he has already that? outlived far outlived his natural lifespan wasn't the philosopher's stone made using natural ingredients what what greg your friends choose very morbid to subjects of discussion yeah, Ray is like gingerly edged back over to Rose. <laughs> One of the little Spriggan children is like sitting and just like listening to us, like nodding. <laughs> I want to be a disciple of the God of Death too. Yeah. One of the Spriggan <laughs> children is like, all men must die. <laughs> Adorable. Okay, I'm gonna ask. I'm gonna say okay. 
Do you have any piece of wisdom that you can share with me that I can take with me onto my travel? I heard someone say once in a city called Palesport that wisdom is like a monkey bread tree. I don't know what a monkey or a bread is. I've eaten bread, but I don't understand why it's growing on a tree. But it's like the monkey bread tree. And two people, or one person, can't put their arms around it. You know, it's been a while since I talked to him, but it was something like that. I don't really have a lot of wisdom for you, but I, I have advice. If you are to travel, um, not everyone has your best interests at heart. They do not wish to protect the natural order the way we do. Sometimes it is best to go on your own, even if it is easier with others. That's what I found. Well, I've been on my own for a while. I know what that's like. Yes. All things have pros and cons. I traveled a lot of places, seen a lot. I've tried to protect many waters. I have created little groves for uh, the protection of, of many places. But... I always am um, called back here. Perhaps when you find what calls you, you'll find your place. How about that? That's about as wise as I can get. <laughs> well, I guess there's some truth in that. Maybe I just need to get the most out of my ears to actually hear something old. I suggest a good swim cleans everything right out. Just don't go too far outside of the grove. The waters can be dangerous, especially if you are not familiar with them. Are we fine with taking the boat back, or do you think that's good? If you made it here, I'm sure you could make it back. Great. Well, thank you so much for your hospitality. We probably should get going. Oh, sure, certainly. Your little ones are adorable, by the way. Oh, they're not mine. <laughs> but thank you. I will pass that along. I, I give her a little bow. Great. It was a pleasure. We're going. We're going. Are you done? We're going. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right. Uh, and with that, I think we've hit a very nice place to take our break for uh, the day. Uh, we will take about five minutes and come back with the rest of the session. Uh, I hope to see you all then. Um, be right back.